Hello everyone, D&D Breakfast Club here. I'm back for another video of Wonder Draft Tutorial. Today I want to go over some advanced features. I want to go over some of the comments and the questions that have been posted in my other videos. I want to show you some of the maps that I've done since the last time. And really, I just want to cover all the new updates and all the new features that I've been using and trying out since my last video over a year ago. First, let's just make sure that you're updated to the newest version of Wonderdraft. Right now we're on version 1.1.1. If you're not updated, pause the video and go ahead and do that right now. There's a lot of features that are interesting that you might not have yet. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and open up a new map. I'm going to open up a map that we've been using for the past 20 sessions of our D&D campaign. The first thing you might see is this is not a continent map, it's not a world map, it's just a smaller region. My friend came to me and said, I have this idea for what I want, can you help me make this map? I had him draw out a rough draft, just an outline, took a picture of it, uploaded it into Wonder Draft, and used it as an overlay. After that I just painted around it and we talked about some different features and different things that he wanted. I filled in the details and this is the final result. Let's go ahead and check out some of the new features that I've been using to make this map. Go ahead and click the water tab and then click your water brush. This is the fresh water brush. As you use this and move it around the map you can paint in different rivers and lakes. And you can do this instead of using the lake feature or the rivers. It has a little bit more control than previously and it's affected by the freshwater tool in the water tab. Go back to map effects. Click your freshwater color and drag it around and you'll notice that it changes the color but it doesn't change the color of the oceans. Go ahead and click your land tool. This is one of the most prominent features and something that I think was absolutely necessary for Wonder Draft. This has been added since the last time I did any tutorials. Go ahead and click the brush tool. Pick any of these colors, move to your map, and start brushing on it. You'll notice that when I brush, everything is colored at the same time. Instead, I'm going to expand the filters, click all, deselect everything, and click ground. Now as I start brushing, you'll notice that it's not brushing anything but the ground. I'll go back and deselect ground, select the mountains and start brushing. Now it's just painting the mountains instead. This feature works for trees, symbols, ground, and mountains alike. The second part of the land tool that's been added is the landmass polygonal tool. Once you select it, when you start clicking it's going to create anchor points. When you're done, right click to confirm the selection or you can double click and then you can move the land to anywhere you want. You can hit enter to confirm the placement. I think it's a little more useful for islands or small land masses. So again, I'm going to click around this, move the land, and click enter to confirm the placement. The one thing that I think could be added to this that would make it much more useful is if it selected everything and not just the land. And by that I mean it would select the symbols, the trees, the hills, it would move it all together. Let's go ahead and move on to the Symbols tab. Here in the Symbols tool they've added some new things. Go ahead and click the set, scroll down, and you'll see all the different installations that are in the assets. That'll include the custom assets that you install. The things that you see here are all default. There are a few new things they've added since the last time I did a video. So you got Arabia, Walls, wall boulders, and sci-fi buildings. Let's go ahead and move on to the labels. Click the label tool, 
go ahead and make a new label and I'll just scroll through all the different fonts. All right, let's move on back to symbols. On the right tab, you see two buttons, map effects and symbol layers. Select anything that you can, like a mountain or a tree or a symbol. And when you click it, you'll notice there's 10 different layers. This should give you enough room to work with keeping things in front or behind each other. It works with pretty much everything except paths. So let me move this bridge over here and see if I can put it in front of everything. Clicking any of these layers on the positive side puts it in front. Clicking any of the layers on the negative side puts it behind. These are all the additions and features that I wanted to show you. So let's go ahead and move on and look at some of the comments and the questions that I've had for my chat. First comment comes from Barney. He says, my girlfriend bought this for me today and I'm already in love with it. I noticed that zooming in and out moves the map to weird locations. How do I center it? Centering I found is pretty easy. I use control scroll wheel for the most part. If you control scroll wheel out, it, it kind of moves it a little bit weird. I understand what you're saying. Go ahead and click the middle button in and drag it around. This should help you center it. When you zoom in, it zooms into the focus of your mouse. If I move the cursor over to this island and zoom in, you notice it zooms into that. Alternatively, if you just want to center it for everything, click Ctrl-0 and that fits it to the screen. This key combo isn't that easy, but if you want, you can change the preferences at your whim. Go to Menu, Preferences, there's four tabs at the top, click hotkeys, look through this list and you can change anything that you want. It's specific in almost everything and all the functions of the map. Find some combos that you like and hit apply. So control zero is fit to screen. If I change it, I wanna make sure I don't overwrite something already there so it looks like control two is open. Apply. And now when I hit control two, it fits to screen. The next question comes from seven. What I need to know is about the dimensions of the map. I need to make a big, big map. I need it for worlds, roads, mountain trees, states, and it demands a lot of space. I'll actually combine this with a second question from Triangle Productions. They say, I ran out of room on my map and I need another continent. What should I do? I don't want to start all over because I worked so hard on the continent I already have. So let's check out what you can do. Go to menu, change map size. Actually, let's address the first question. You can get the map pretty large. Keep the aspect ratio the same by clicking the link. Increase the size. And I went to 10,000, so it defaults down to the max size of 8192. Hit OK, and you'll notice that it gives me a lot more canvas to work with. The continent can be huge, or the region, or whatever kind of map you're working on. Let's go ahead and open another one. Let's go again. Menu, change map size, maintain aspect ratio, increase the width to max. This time I'm gonna select scale map. So here's my new map. I've scaled it all the way up and it doesn't look that much different, right? The one thing that did change is the hex grid is not scaled accordingly, so you'll need to adjust that to your own size. 
I'll bet you did notice on the first time I created the map when I created all that extra space that I've pretty much answered the question for triangle. So let's try this one more time. Menu, change map size, keep the maintain aspect ratio on, increase it to the maximum size. I'm going to leave the scale map off and I can move my land mass up, down, right or left. For this one I'm going to move my land mass to the right and hit OK. Once I zoom out, you'll see that there is a lot more canvas to work with, and my land stayed on the right-hand side. I'll show you one more feature of the polygonal lasso tool that can be used in different circumstances that I missed. So click the tool, select where you want to start your anchors, and start clicking, moving around the map. I'm going to drag this anchor all the way around the map, and once I'm done, I'll press the right click button to confirm the selection. And then I'll click fill. Once I do that, it fills the entire place with land. The entire selection that I've created gets filled with land. It can be easier to do this for larger maps than trying to use the brush tool. Adding the land with the brush tool takes a long time in large maps. If you do this, all you'll have to do is readjust the coastlines afterwards. The last part of this question I'll address at the end is once you've made your new map and you like the way it looks, I'm going to show you how to create it so you have the exact size you want. Because you don't want all this excess ocean or excess space around. So go back to menu. Create detail map. Move your zoom to one times instead of four times because we're not going to make it larger. We want to keep it the same size. If you keep all those filters selected, it changes the symbols, the trees, the mountains, the paths, the labels accordingly. Select area. And then click and drag to make sure you have the right map size. Click create. Once you're done, you'll notice that I have a new map and the right size and I can save it accordingly. Hey everyone, if you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, go ahead and leave a like or a comment. Anything you can do to help support this channel is much appreciated.